Hello everyone, uh, my name is Chung. I'm a front end engineer in Singapore, and uh, today I'll talk about a small test suite game that I built with Angular, like maybe six months ago during the circuit breaker. I mean, not, not circuit breaker, it's just the time I spent. I stayed at home, and <laughs> I think it was a cool thing to do. Um, so before we, just a sec, can I hide this one? Uh, hi. Floating? Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, so uh, just a bit about me before we, we continue. So I'm uh, currently a front-end engineer at Cake Defy, a platform that lets you earn uh, cash flow through your cryptocurrency. And we also are like, looking for a JavaScript engineer at the moment. So you are interested in, and uh, just take a look at our Twitter. Also, I'm an organizer of Angular Vietnam. And um, uh, we has the uh, Twitter also at the moment, NGVN official. You can follow us to get a uh, less Disney about Angular and uh, our upcoming event. One of the uh, focusing we are doing is like the 100 day of Angular that we wrote in Vietnamese to try to um, advocate the Angular community in Vietnam. And so for today agenda, I will uh, go through Tetris and why I build the Tetris game with Angular. What is the tech stack behind? And there's some uh, development challenge that I, I faced uh, when I was working with the game itself. So yeah, like I started. <clears throat> so the uh, Tetris game, like I hope that all of us are famil familiar with it. It's like a game that invented by Alexei, a Russian, in 1984. So the, the rule is very simple. You just rotating and move the, the pieces so that you try to fill out the horizontal row like of the block thing without any empty cell. You, you can fill in like a solid row, which means that you can clear that and you got the score. And that, yeah, basically that touches. And uh, the version that I be with Angular is look like that. You can go to tetris.chungk18.com and let me slide here. Yeah. So that is again, basically it follow the same rule of Tetris. You can take the pieces, it generate the pieces for you. You can move it out and yeah, try to fill in the block, maybe something like that. Yeah, so when this one uh, row is filled with all of the uh, block, it will just clear it. So yeah, basically that is a game. It uh, has some option. You can uh, turn, off, uh, turn off and turn on the sound and you yeah, can put the pieces like faster by pressing the space like that. And yeah, that is uh, the angle attached that I built. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hey. So why I decided to build Angular Tetris is like, I think Tetris was one of the, the first game console that I ever had in my life, like when I was like five years old. And at that time, the the money, like the Tetris game cost about like a 2,000 of egg. We can feed the family for about one or two weeks. So I think when my dad gave me the Tetris, he really like uh, hoped that I, utilize the game and really enjoy it. And actually I will really enjoy it. I, the one that I have is like the yellow thing here. I think, yeah, it's still the, now they, they still selling it, but uh, the quality is not like the one that I have before. Maybe, I don't know, just the feeling different. And um, the Angular Tetris does, were not like origin or originated coming from my, my mind. It's like, I saw the similar version, which is written in VOJS. And also my wife saw it and uh, I thought that why not I do the same with Angular. And also my wife encouraged me to do the same thing. So, you know, that, that is the thing in life. You have to accept it. <laughs> and uh, I think that was the time when I, I received the, the Tetris. So it's like 1996 or 97. I was born in the, in the uh, rural area. It's like the mountainside of Vietnam. So at the background, you can see that's just a mountain and uh, the house was like um, really 20 years ago, I guess. 
Yeah, so because there's a viewer Tetris already, so the, the approach was, I think it's, it's much simple for me. I don't have to design the game. I don't have to write all of this HTML CSS. So the, the thing I did first is like, I look at the viewer chairs source code and I build a, a small to-do list because I work like, by my own, but I still need something to like keep track of the task. So it is just the, the simple to-do list. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, okay, I have it here. Yeah, so basically it is gonna look like that, very simple. It just has some uh, checklists and I'll uh, just keep track of what I'm, I'm going to do. Sure. Shang, we, we cannot see, I think we can only see your slides at the moment. If oh, you yeah? switch to another app, we cannot oh. see. If you really want to do that, then you might have to unshare and reshare. I see, just a sec. Maybe I just do it in the same screen like that? Yeah. Yeah, okay, sure. Just uh, give me a sec, I will bring back the, the thing here. Oh, no, uh, okay, have a try. But I think we're still looking at your browser. I think when you shared your screen, you only shared your browser. E oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I, think, I, think, yeah, I think I get what you mean. So just now there's a few things that you I didn't see. Uh, yeah, uh, I think you were playing the game maybe. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's fine, I think. So can you see it now? Sorry, just want to check. Can you still see the slide? Oh, you no, don't I see can only see you now. Okay. Uh, if you go yeah. share screen and then desktop, the... I think. Desktop? But it's just the desktop one. Maybe I try it. Can you see it now? I can see your browser still. Yeah, you can see the slide. Yeah, correct. Sure. Yeah, okay, so the, the game is basically look like that. Just now I, I show it, but uh, I think you I didn't see it, so. Right, yeah. Yeah. Just hide this one. So this is a game. Basically, you can go into the address here, Tetris.truncate, you can play it around. And basically, it's just very simple. You can use keyboard to navigate the thing around. And uh, yeah, basically, it's just trying to clear, like fill in the pieces. And it's going to be clear for you. And you can enable sound. I think it's going to be loud. Yeah, Not sure you can hear it, but you play it on your own browser, it's gonna be a bit louder. So yeah, so I just talking about this uh, simple checklist for myself to keep track of all the tasks that I'm, I'm working on. It is not to like uh, a proper Kanban board or something, it's just something for me to know where I am and when it's gonna be ready for publishing. And uh, I'll just start with the HTML that, that you are seeing here. So the HTML is like, just the skeleton with the with the Game Boys and stuff. And the, the core thing is just the, the one in the central of the screen where everything is moving and you can use a keyboard or smile to control it. And I'll uh, end up using a, a, another library for, for the core of the game because writing the whole thing like from scratch is not something that I like to do. And it's gonna take a lot of time. And um, I also uh, replace the set timeout and set interval uses with the IHS, which is the reactive like way of, of um, doing program. And it's just like uh, well known in the Angular community. And yeah, after that, I'm just handling the keyboard and the sound thing. So when I look at the VOHS code, it was, I think it was well written. It is just like, because it was written in JavaScript, so there's a few part that it could be like easy error prone because when you you build it, it didn't tell you like which part might go wrong. It is like it's a nature of JavaScript, which is a dynamic language, so we cannot blame it. But when I start to migrate the code over to TypeScript, I start to realize there's a few bug that we can catch earlier, and uh, the the viewer version was using set timeout and set interval like a lot of time and there's there were a few parts that was difficult to understand and i will show you guys now i think so this is the like i said is the most important part of the game and because the screen is a bit smaller so the left side is basically what i was like rewrote with TypeScript. and it's just the service and the right side was the viewer chairs so i try to break it 
into a smaller function and give it a like, um, like meaningful name so that when you read a code after six months, you can understand it a bit. Um, the viewer, I think there's, there's a few bit that I don't understand, like all of these four thing and just their own of the manipulation plus thing here, like x, y at the zero, at one, and I don't really understand it. So that's why I, I decided to use another library and also um, re rewrite the, the brain of the game. I don't reuse the uh, Vue.js um, logic for that. So I, I use this NGX Tetris game. So it is just a call. Like basically there's an array which fill in like uh, 200 uh, object. And when you wanted to render it on the UI, you need to do your own path. It just provided you the call, which is the data structure. And um, I added a bit more functionality like navigating between the pieces like left, right, and uh, clearing and, and stuff. But the, the core thing was like still inside the, the library, ng Tetris. Uh, give the guy a shower. He really did a good job here. So the game loop, when you think about it, it's very simple. You see it like uh, when you start the game, always there's uh, every time, like after a, a fixed like, time, there will be the pieces going down. And when it's rigged to the bottom, another pieces will be like like uh, like will be rendered on the screen, and it's keep going down, and it just keep going down. And for every movement, you will try to check when the thing is like colliding with other pieces. You wanted to know, is it like filling one solid row so that you can clear it, or it is the game over state? That's it. Very simple. So the it is just inside in one simple function called auto, and it takes a delay, which is the number in millisecond. And I'll just run the timer. Every, this delay like could be 300 millisecond. The, the speed is gonna be faster along the way when you like, like uh, getting like higher score. So the level here now is one, but it could go up to six. When the level is going up, it means the time for you to, um, the time when the PC is falling is faster. Like I can start the level five and you see the, the, the PC is moving really fast. That is the delay that I put in. And if you look at the code, the, the auto function is calling just one function, which is the update function. And just a sec. Uh, can you still see the code now, Joe? Joey? Yes, can see. Sure, thanks. So the the function to um to the the function inside the the game loop was pretty simple. That is the update function, and the update function is just do a few thing like I mentioned above. So it will. Oh, there, there's a few parts I, I will not explain because uh, it's just the way I, I, I do it. So basically, you wanted to try to move the current pieces now, like just plus one on the screen. And then if it's colliding with the bottom, you you mark the current pieces as solid, which means that there's uh, it, will, it has been filled on the screen. It's not going anywhere else. It's, it's fixed the position. And then you try to check if the thing is like making a full line or making the full two line or making a full uh, three or four line. And then after that, just trying to set the next pieces available. And then uh, if it is like get out of this function, it will draw the next pieces and then the update will call again and you will get the, the thing. So yeah, basically that's the roughly the idea. And you can uh, always take a look at my code. Okay. So go back to the slide. So now uh, get back to the to the data structure that I store the, the pieces. So basically the pieces that render on the screen is just the geometric shape that composing of four square. You can see that all of that is four square and it's just in a different uh, arrangement. Like the S and the G here is like the reflection of each other or the L and the J here, it's just the reflection of each other. And to store it, I has the base class, 
which I call pieces. And then at a certain point of time, there's always X and Y to know that variety on the screen. And I has the shape thing, the shape property to store the current shape at the moment because the pieces could like rotate, like something like that, yeah? So you need to know exactly the, the current shape of the pieces. Like if I change to this one, it's like, it has four direction uh, movement. So the shape is just like to store the the current uh, shape of a piece at a certain point of time. And let me open the code for you so that you can see it easier. So that is the base class. Just X and Y and the, the current rotation. Always it will start with uh, degree zero. And uh, if you take a look in the rotation, you can see that there's um, just zero, nine, uh, 90 degree, 180 and 270. So always like maximum four direction. And the shape, if you look into, there's a there's an array of shape, which is just an array of something else. If I look into the Z, maybe the T thing. So I just set the, the shape of the T by default, which is an empty array. And then I put in the corresponding of the degree to the shape. So if you look into the, the array here, so one is meaning it's going to be rendered on the screen and zero is like nothing. I put it like four, four times four because the, the, the I thing is going to take the whole row and the whole thing. So I need to put it at least four by four. <laughs> That's the reason if I have the question. And um, if you define all of the movement, like degree, you can see that there's also the property called next, which to display it on the, on the right side, basically that's the, the one, the next shape. So I, I, I'm not using the same because the next here is like gonna be the smaller, like two times eight, uh, two times four. Yeah, it's just the, the array is smaller. So I, I don't use the, the same data structure that I put for a shape, but basically that's the idea. And because I put the shape in this like very like verbose way, so that if you want to do a customized pieces, it's gonna be simple. I would say so, because I, I tried it before with a simple pieces, which is not existing on the Texas game ever. Like this is the F thing, so you can, put in the F and if you look at the code, it's gonna be quite interesting to see because it's gonna be very simple. You just define the pieces F, which extend from the piece class. And then in the, the, the shape array, you put in what you want is gonna look. So if you put the degree like 90, you can just copy and paste it and you change the, the thing here. So it will like update corresponding on the UI for you. I think it's, it's quite easy to extend. And the piece is gonna be generated through one factory. Actually, I forgot what it's called. Is it like piece factory? Oh yeah, it's a piece factory. So when I try to get a piece to display on the, the screen, it tried to generate a new bag, which always has a maximum of, uh, I think, seven uh, touches pieces. And it is to evenly distribute the piece, like you will see at least the, the, the Z or at least the T. If you, are, if you just do it like a, a, a random movement without put, putting into the back, which means you could see the T like five times and then you see the, the, the T, then it's gonna, not gonna make sense. So, I put thing into the current bag. And if the bag is empty, I will generate the new bag, which has all of the all of the pieces that I, I put in. So that I make sure that the pieces will be like evenly distributed. You might see this thing one, but you see the, the other thing twice. Right? For example, it's the maximum. You will not see something 10 times and you see another piece for like just one time. Yeah, that, that is the idea behind this bag thing. Yeah, and I think yeah, it's just basically about the data structure of the piece and in short, it's, it's quite verbal, but it's easier to extend. So I think I will still stick with that approach in the future if I need to build something. 
I, I would rather yeah, doing it verbal and easier to understand and maintain rather than to do it a bit short and then later on we'll be struggling. <laughs> um, animation why is, uh, I didn't like, I'm not an expert of keyframe and stuff. So I using IHS also to rewrote the animation and on the viewer JS version, they was using set timeout and set interval a lot which creating this callback that we all knew about. So I don't want to repeat that uh, uh, this season. So I just try to do it with the uh, IHS. So the animation wise, I was utilizing one of the uh, CLS transform thing to just flip the image over so that I don't have to store two image. And what does it mean is like when you put the scale width negative one, you can just flip the thing over, like you put it thing into the mirror. And that is how I do to get the reflection of the dinosaur when you see it, when you first open the app, this one, this dinosaur. So by default, I only has the uh, photo to store it facing to the right side. But when I do the transform with scale negative one, I has exactly the same version, but the dinosaur now is looking to the left side. And why do I need this? Because it's just to make some animation. Yeah, basically. So the first animation we need to look at is the eye. The eye is very simple. It's just like changing between the first two photos, the one and the two. If you look at this is the first one and the, the second one. So it's just I close and eyes open. And here is like I close and I open. I also do very simple IHS. The timer here is working exactly like set interval. So it will go into this, this uh, tab like every 500 milliseconds. And I will take why the thing is less than six. And if it's even, I will just uh, set it to one. If not, it's, it's set it to two. So basically it's just to uh, toggle between the two steps every 500 milliseconds. So that you have this animation, which is the dragon is uh, opening the eye. The next thing is like the running animation, which is you still do the same, but because the running is requiring faster movement, that's why I put the timer, over. it's just 100 milliseconds. And every, like after the, the leg is moving for eight of, or 10 times, it will change the direction. So inside the temp function, I also check whenever it's, uh, it's moved like enough for every like, um, it's uh, divided by 10, which is, is moved for 10 movement on one side, then I just flip the side by doing this left and right. So the left and right here is using the, the transform negative one that you saw before. That's why I can flip between the two sides. And then the same thing, it will just toggle between the three and the four uh, sprite. Which if you see it, it's just the three and the four. So just the leg is moving up and down. And if you just toggle it, Fast, it will look like it is moving. That's it. Very, I think it's going to be simple. And at the end, I need to combine the thing together. And by combine the thing, I mean the dragon will open the eye and then it will start to run. Run, 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 please run. Yeah, and start to run. And then after a while, it will open the eye and just keep repeating this thing. So I was combining the two things together using this uh, concat operator, which means that you just finish the first one and then you run the second one. I put the delay for five seconds because when I first load the tetris, usually it's gonna take five seconds for the first animation, which is this one, the one go down and go up. And then I start to load the uh, dinosaur. And after it's finished one time, it's gonna stop yeah, for another five seconds. And it will restart it again. Trung, so, uh, could, could, could you wrap up in about five minutes? Is that OK? Sure, sure. Yeah, I think it should, should be OK. OK. Yeah, probably fine. And yeah, it is at the end, it's the animation on the left is that what I did, and the right is the, the original version. Basically, it's not very identical, but yeah, for me, it's good enough. 
So the keyboard handling was simple because in Angular, they has this hot listener. So you just define a function. You put the hot listener and you put, uh, you put the key with the, like you separated it with the dot and then like you do key down and the arrow left. So when you press the left on the keyboard, it will go inside this function like automatically. And what you need to do is just to handling it. And for the web audio is a bit uh, tricky because different browser get a uh, different implementation for the web audio. So that I received a lot of uh, feedback after I published it on, on GitHub. And the guy was saying that sound were not like working properly. That's why I'm using this audio context monkey patch. You might want to yeah, consider to use it. So basically it's just like a uh, streamline uh, some of the API between uh, Chrome, Opera, Firefox and stuff. And you don't have to worry about the rest. Yeah. And I think it's somewhere here. Should be, I forgot. And with that, yeah, the time spending was like, I was spent about 30 hours. I think it was still a bit long because I don't have to write all of the HTML and CLS and also the core of the game. But still, it took 30 hours, which is like a week of work. But yeah, pretty enjoying it. Like it's a cool game anyways, and I can play it later on. Uh, got some community support and uh, people were sharing it over and over. And I was really like exciting to see it. It's growing. Yeah, it will even get to the top training on GitHub for like one day for Thai trip. And with that, Thank you, and uh, I hope you uh, enjoy playing the game. Uh, yeah, I think that's it from my talk. And if you have any questions, just just uh, yeah, just put it on the chat, or you can unmute, and we can uh, have some discussion now. Thank you, and uh, forgot Happy New Year, everyone. I'm finished. Thank you very much, Trung. Thanks, and uh, I'll just take a screenshot. <laughs> I did have a couple of questions, but wow. then you answered both of them. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know because I always talk about Angular, but I think because